All righty. We have waited long enough. Chat, are you ready for a phenomenal promise ending run of Signalis by Miss Scarlet Tanager? If Scarlet, if you're ready, please take it away. Alrighty, I am Miss Scarlet Tanager. Hello, everyone. I am definitely ready to uh, do some promise ending. I've got my chopsticks prepared. You'll figure out why I'm going to use these later. Um, so promise ending is was only relatively recently in terms of the signal of speed running actually routed because the game is fairly complicated in how it determines what ending you get if you're not trying to go for the default which is memory or the secret ending which is artifact so we are going to get straight into it and you said that one armed is the costume that i'm going to be doing right that is correct okay cool um, we are going to get straight into it. The time is going to begin as soon as, hold on, as soon as I get into, come on game, there we go, making sure my splits was up, um, as soon as the first cutscene gets skipped. So in three, two, one, and go. All right, so, oh. Oh, wait, hold on. Can, can we restart real quick? I accidentally hit a strange button on my console. Hold on just a second. While we get that sorted, is there time for a couple quick donations? Yes, there is. I am sorry Fan about that. Fantastic, because I have a $100 donation from CC that says Scarlet has put a ton of work into routing the endings of Signalis, which involves an amazing amount of math, trickery, and hackery. Show it off and enjoy, and good luck. Okay, so sorry about that. Are we good to go again? I hit the wrong button when I was trying to bring up um, the con the changing for the costume. Um, so can we start again? Oh, sorry. Um, there we go. Cool. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we'll start again in three, two, one and start so sorry about that um this is signalis and we are going to immediately do something that you generally would not do in a speed run and we are going to switch over to costume number three. Oh no she has one arm this is the one armed co the co one armed costume the game is interesting and in how it um decides what elster actually looks like in that the game just swaps costumes whenever it needs her to have a different costume on in the game. So this one is the one-armed. It's my personal favorite because it's kind of ridiculous. You can see that Elster has only, well, one arm. And she's also missing part of her rib cage, but don't worry about it, she's fine. Because we're just walking around. We're gonna be, sh we're gonna be shooting a gun um, off later with one arm somehow. I don't know, sometimes it just be like that. So, uh, at the moment, we are in a ship called the Penrose, which is a super advanced, super special little uh, spaceship that totally doesn't have Eldritch Abominations on board or anything to do with uh, Cthulian shenanigans. So, don't worry about that. All of this is perfectly normal. Yeah, this is all perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. Ignore the fact that Elster was put into a... Uh, a spacesuit here. It's just it's just a cutscene. It's fine. We're going to be losing an arm in just a second here. It's fine. All right. So the game has both third person and uh, third person and first person segments. This is one of the first person segments. All you do to get through these is you just either mash your mouse button or you mash F. Sadly, this game doesn't have button remapping, so you just sort of get used to the layout of it. Now, there are a few cutscenes in the game that are not skippable. This is one of them. Weirdly, I'm not sure why this cutscene specifically isn't skippable, but this one, one of them later, and the artifact ending, interestingly enough. 
Oh no, she has two arms. We need to correct this injustice. We will correct it very shortly. All right, so if you've got time for a donation, we're going into another first person segment where I'm not going to be able to do much for a moment, if you've got one. Phenomenal. I've got a $50 donation from LMM Toss. Says it goes without saying, remember our promise. Had to get on, <laughs> on these bid wars and also, an ancient looking prize is lying on the table. It feels like it is calling to me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope, mm -mm, nope. D don't, just don't, just don't do it. It's fine. All right, we are back to our one arm self. So this is promise ending and you may be wondering what, how do you get the different endings? Well, uh, don't pay attention to pretty much every single ending guide for Signalis you see online because they are for the most part wrong. The endings for this game, not including Artifact, which has its own system, is based off of a point system. And whatever ending has the most points at the end of the game is the, pro is the ending that you will get. Again, not including Artifact, which has its own shenanigans. Now, the thing is, for the speedrun setting, no matter what you do in a speedrun, you will always, always end the game with four points in memory. So that's the reason why if you just play the uh, speed run normally, you will always, 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 always get the memory ending. If you're doing just a regular, try and beat the game as fast as possible. Now, what are we going to do about that? Hmm. So we could reduce how many memory points that you get, which, okay, not an option. Because no matter, again, no matter what you do, you will always end the game with four points in memory. That was weird. Don't worry, the game's a buggy sometimes. Um, I'm just gonna pick this up because we need it. So the ending we're going to get promise, in order to get promise, we need to get more points than the memory ending. So we need to get five points. Now, how do we get those five points? Well then, each of the endings has different things that you can do in order to increase the number of points in that ending. The Promise ending. Uh, just a second here. One, da, 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 da. One, da, 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 da. Let's see if I can get this in one try. Oh, it's off by one. Okay, this is a little lock pick, pick, picking puzzle in the beginning of the game. But anyway, in order to get the promise ending, you need to take over 1,900 points of damage. You need to get something called deaths cheated nine times and you need to die six times, and you need to spend at least five total in-game minutes auto-healing from critical damage to, eh, you've seen better days. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong costume. Did not notice, there we go. So what we're gonna do in this game is bonk. That's promise ending, chat. That is, that is definitely promise ending. We're gonna spend the entire game purposefully running into enemies to keep ourselves low health the entire game, at least until the final boss. Because the game has finished calculating most of the ending points for the game before you get to the final boss. So instead of trying to dodge enemies, I'm just gonna bonk. All right, so we've, if we've got time for one donation, if you got one. Yeah, absolutely. I have a $50 donation from Eris Lockhart saying donating to support fashion and lore for Signalis. <laughs> so I figure that the one-armed costume is, is, pre is pretty, pretty apropos for this ending specifically, seeing as Elster has seen better days. But yeah, you can't really keep track of how much damage you've taken during the run. So the most consistent way I've found to do it is to just run into most enemies, with a few exceptions, because later on uh, it's not optimal to do so but what we're doing right now is we are running around trying to find the uh key card for that little ladder that or not ladder elevator that i was in earlier hello hit me please thank you so you can see that elster is currently uh bleeding her own blood don't worry it's just raspberry jam she's gonna be fine it's only a flesh wound so whenever the care whenever elster is doing that whenever she is uh bleeding strawberry jam, 
that is a sign that you've gotten low enough damage that the game is going to start auto healing you. So anytime you are at critical damage, the game will uh, auto heal to about, I think, half health. It's either half or 30%. It might be based off of your difficulty. I can't remember. But for the entirety of this run, we need to have a net five minutes spent in that auto heal mode. Hence the running into every enemy in order to keep yourself as low as health as possible, which does make a couple moments pretty dicey. But here is our faithful friend, the radio. The radio is extremely important in this game. You pretty much use it for a good half or so of the puzzles, I think. Thankfully, it can be put on a toggle so you don't have to go into the menu whenever you need to use it, which is what I thought the first time I played this game, and I was very confused as to why runners were able to just put it on a toggle. All right, so I'm just listening. Okay, and boom. Okay, remember this code. Six, five, nine, zero, one. Six, five, nine, zero, one. Six, five, nine, zero, one. Six, five, nine, zero, one, enter. So I have most of these um, memorized. Oh, I skipped that one. Now the thing is, it is, there we go. The frequency that you need to put the radio to for specific puzzles in the game, you don't actually know um, what the number is. It's somewhat randomized. You know the range that the number is going to be at, but not the actual number, which is why you saw me sort of messing around with what number it was on. Now I know for the next code that I need, it's going to be this number because you can hear the sort of Morris code sort of sound. Now we're gonna wait a moment until that happened because it makes the radio go away. I think I did that too slowly. Three, seven, eight. Yeah, I did that too slowly. Okay. Three, seven, eight, oh. Two, three, seven, eight, oh, okay. So the next code is two, three, oh, I forgot what it was. What did I say it was? Two, three, seven, seven eight, eight, oh. zero. Seven, eight, zero. That's what it was. Okay. Now we're going to go straight all the way back down to 142, which is going to be the next code. Now, funnily enough, we're not actually going to need it. And the game changed my costume again. There we go. We're not actually going to need the radio again until the next chapter. So, okay, hello, hit me please, thank you. All right, so now we are in the area that, uh, I can't actually remember what this area is called because in my splits, it's just called Mina Rex. <laughs> because the boss of this area is a rather infamous boss in Signala speedrunning called Mina. Mina is, uh, well, she's either going to take me about a minute and a half to beat, or she's going to be one shot. I'm going to go for the one shot. Hello there. Hi. Thank you for hitting me. Okay. So we just drained the water for the second story so that we can get down here. We're going to actually ignore that key card. The entire point of this section of the game is to pick up all of these key cards, but we're going to leave that one. All right, now I'm not going to try to actually not get hit here because you can see the uh, screen effect that's on my screen right now. That is a sign of being low health. Now in Promise Ending, you need to sort of juggle um, when you let yourself be on low health and when you don't. Because, well, if you're on low health and your health gets low enough, you do this thing called game over. And even though we do need to farm deaths we need to farm them at a specific point in order to get through the game as fast as possible. Alrighty. So I picked up something called the v the video cassette there. So we're about to do one of the game's more uh, infamous glitches. If I can pull it off, it's a little harder to do it under pressure, but this is going to be called the blind VHS run. If I can get the glitch. So I'm gonna focus for a second here. Come 
Usually it's not this hard. What Scarlet's trying to do here is if you go into the map like at the same time that you use the video cassette, you can glitch the game out so that you're using the cassette at the same same time you exit this okay. door. So and now she's moving around in the hallway while the video cassette's playing. And I got it. Cool. So the blind VHS awesome. run is like was said, you use the uh, video cassette at the s and exit into the map in a very, very, very short amount of time. You can't do too quickly or it doesn't work and you can't do too slowly or it doesn't work. So I'll finish explaining it in a second. I'm gonna use that code from earlier, which was 23780. Okay. 23780. Oh. Yes, those were letters. I have a cheat sheet. Don't worry about it, it's fine. So the uh, explanation for the bl blind VHS run, because you delay when you actually go into the VHS area, when you go through a door at the same time, you get control back on Elster. So you're able, while the uh, VHS portion is loading, hit me please, thank you. While the uh, blind VHS is, lo or while the VHS is loading, rather, you, can run around on the screen. So you spend that time getting to the next screen. I'm gonna pick up the shotgun here. Normally you wouldn't actually use the shotgun, but I'm gonna pick it up for safety later. Mostly because I don't wanna do the save the game and then don't do the glitch correctly. Or it's not technically a glitch, but. All right, so this is one of the cards that we need to get. It isn't correctly branded with the code that it needs. So we just printed ourselves a new one. Alrighty, hello, honey, please hit me, thank you. All right, we're gonna open this door up here, but we're not gonna go through it yet. Because especially on the old patch of the game, which is what I'm playing on, because we're playing any percent, um, the doors can be a bit of a hassle to actually get through. So you're gonna see me sometimes spinning in front of a door after I unlock it. That is to help me get through it faster. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. I think I did that right. I might have done this one wrong. No, I think I did that. Oh, no, I did it wrong. Okay. Yeah, this one was over one too many. Right. There we go. Cool. I said five, and I hit six. Oh, how dare you? Okay, I did it wrong on that one, too. And can be surprisingly difficult to pay attention and to commentate at the same time. Oh dear. Okay, I got it right that time. Cool. So here's another one of the cards that we need. We need to get five of them, and they are each modeled after different elements. So you got water, fire. Um, weirdly, gold is one of them. Air and earth, I think. Alrighty. So remember that water key, that key in the underground area that I left behind earlier? We need to backtrack to go grab that. So if you got any donations, now's the time for probably two of them. Phenomenal. I have a $10 donation from Irvi that says longtime GDQ viewer, first time donating to Flame Fatales, and I'm loving the event. Donating for Ashley's romantic costume in the upcoming Resident Evil 4 run. We also have a $75 donation from Aegis saying these are exciting times. Great causes, great runs, and great people. Hyped for that bonus run of fear later on tonight. Don't forget, chat, we are just over $4,000 left towards that goal. So if you want to see First Encounter Assault Recon, please make sure to get your donations in. And if you want to see the costumes, put your money towards those as well. I'm excited for fear. I, I love the fear speed run. It's such a it's such a fun speed run to watch. Okay. I am going to attempt to do the um it's called an item buffer, a first person item buffer. This one is harder for me to do, so I don't always end up doing it. So I'm just gonna try it a few times. Oh, I actually got it. I am surprised. Okay. We're gonna go to the door, click. And Elster is currently out of bounds, and I warped across the room. Don't worry about it. It's fine. 
hello. Okay. So we should probably explain a little bit about the buffers. On any interactable, so on doors, on items, whether it's first person or third person, you can do something called the buffer. All right. Um, it essentially lets you heavily break the game. There is one version of it that uses the buffer on a save point that causes the entire game to go completely bonkers. We don't during that, do that during the speed run. So I'm going to need a little bit of quiet here while I focus on this. I do have this for a backup, but... Oh, I didn't get it. Okay. So what I was trying to do there is something called um, the Mino One Hit Flare Kill. Now I didn't manage it that time, which is fine. There, it is a little bit hard to do when you're on a charity run. So it's hard to do in general. You know, I've been getting better at it, but it is definitely a run killer normally. Uh, how dare you try and hit me? I'm gonna hit you instead of my body. <laughs> Bonk. Yep. So the only way that he can hit Mina is force her to start um, doing what she's doing right there. Uh, you can put to your own conclusion what you think that looks like. And also this place is left intentionally blank, which is the inscription that is on the inside of that incentive prize. Incentive prize, prize in general. All right. So the faster way to do that is called the flare, um, the flare kill or the quick flare kill if you get uh, really good at it, where you one shot the boss with a flare item. Sadly, I didn't get it that time, but you will see it later because we do it twice. We do, do it to both of the bosses in the game the only boss that it doesn't get done to is the final boss. But this also means that I'm going to have uh, more shotgun rounds for the final boss, just in case, you know, charity run safeties and all that. Okay. So now we are in the area called, uh, we're in the, I think it's called the admin area. I can't remember if this is called admin or if this is called protectors. I can never remember the names of the levels. I just go fast. All right. So I'm going to do one, I'm going to attempt to do one skip here. I just learned how to do this recently, so I'm not entirely the best at it, but. Come on. There's another part where Scarlet's going to go out of bounds and warp across the room in the next room. I got it. Awesome. Hey so I just skipped the um, having to go through the room to the side there by instead just glitching through debris, the debris. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, I forgot to change my costume back. My bad. One arm again. We don't need two arms. We just need the one. Elster is just, Elster is just too amazing to need two arms. All right. Hello, friend. Please hit me. Oh, you're not going to? Okay. Maybe your friend will. Thank you. So one thing that can be a little bit, um, annoying about trying to get the promise ending is the fact that there are multiple times in the game where the game itself will heal Elster. So then you have to spend the first like so often first half or so of the next um, chapter of the game purposefully running Elster into enemies just to get her back to low health. All right. So I picked up an item called a fuse there because most of this area is powered down and you know it's a standard Video game logic. Everything's powered down. Fuse. Fuse a code and it's fine. All right. So now that everything is powered back up, we should be able to go onwards. So do you want to explain a little bit of the story of this game? Seeing as uh, you did some studying from what I hear. I mean, the story of the game is... Um not something I want to get too deep into because I do want everyone to actually play this. It's it's a beautiful, albeit very um, obtuse story that that's up. mostly told visually in very small bits. So there's a lot of interpretation to it. Um, at the beginning of the game, you saw us in a spaceship. And um, all of this is obviously happening in a fictional universe. And... Yeah, all you really need to know at this point is we are sort of like a cyborg replicant, is what they're called in this universe. Replica. Replica, yes. 
and yeah, we ended up on this station and our past has something to do with that spaceship at the beginning. Yep. So, oh, hello, thank you for hitting me. And I don't want you to hit me because again, we are juggling um, how often we are in low health because again, we don't want Elster to go too low because that tends to be uh, game over. All right. Now, an interesting thing about this level in particular is, all right, that it is the first time you come across the enemy called Calibri. So if you have issues with lights, look away from the screen for a minute. Oh, this is wonderful. I love seeing this. Do you though? Do you though? Of course. Why would I lie about that? <laughs> okay, you're good to look back at the screen now. So that enemy is called Calibri. The way that you uh, dispatch that enemy, enemy is by attacking them with the radio. So radio frequencies will pop up on the screen and you tune the radio to those frequencies. And then the game decides, oh no, they tuned the correct frequency for too long. Let's just delete the enemy. But sadly, it's, it's slow. So we just have to deal with the uh, shenanigans on our screen. So you saw me do it earlier, but I didn't explain it. So I'm gonna explain it now. This is an area where I would normally have the flashlight, but getting the flashlight this early is slow. So instead, I'm going to wait for the enemy to come near me. I'm gonna stick him with a flashbang or a flare and it's gonna let me through the door. Why does that work? Bleh. The flare gives a tiny, tiny bit of light, just enough light for you to be able to get through the door. If it didn't give that tiny bit of light, you would have to go get the flashlight and use that to get through the door because Elster can't open doors in the dark. All right. So the entire point of this section is to get a specific key so that we can then go get another key. The problem is we have to do a whole bunch of shenanigans to do that. Like, oh dear, my screen's red. That's fine. Okay. And music. Y'all like music? I like music. Music's good. Now, I can't remember what this song is called, but it's an, it is a classical song. It's like classical music. But I can't remember what the actual name of the song is. But for some reason, this specific tune through the radio will open this little doohickey in this sleeping person's arms that gives us the key we need. Because, uh, surprise, this game is extremely Silent Hill crossed with Cthulhu? Crossed with a little bit of, uh, Resident Evil, if I was to describe it. All right. Mainly the item management is very much Resident Evil 1. Yeah. We're just going to leave the music on <laughs> for now. I have to change it in a second, but we're just going to leave it on. I saw, oh, somebody also, in chat said it's from Swan Lake. And those enemies are called stars, if you want to uh, stars. Say stars in chat. <laughs> oh, right, I forgot that they're called stars. Okay, the music's gone now. So we just got the key that we needed. Yay! Here's the flashlight. Oh, I actually should have waited to pull that up, Ella. Now we use that key to go in here. Normally we would have to do a decently long puzzle. But you know what? This is any percent. We don't do puzzles on any percent unless we have to. Yeah, there is a tiny, tiny overlap between the um, activation for grabbing that key and the um, case that the key is in. So instead of um, instead of doing the puzzle and looking at the planetarium stuff, no, no, no. We just go. We just go up to the safe and grab it. <laughs> you can't do that on the. Uh, on the current patch of the game, that is something that is only possible on the old patch, which is what I'm playing on right now. So if you're playing the game uh, glitchless, you would play it on the new patch and you would have to do some uh, other things in order to get that key. You would have to do the puzzle legitimately, quote unquote. Oh no, we have an arm. Let's fix that. All right, so we are in the mines. Now the mines area is pretty much straight shot through, do not pass go, do not collect $100. So we've got a time for probably three or four donations.
Phenomenal. We have a $150 donation from Vacuum saying, I'm not familiar with Signalis, but I'm loving this bonk percent run so far. Good luck to Miss Scarlet Tanager. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous. Thank you, Anonymous. We have another $25 donation from Bobo Luck. Thank you, Bobo. And we also have a $25 donation from Roto Monkey. Thank the gaming gods, GDQ staff, take tech crew and runners for the event. Having a rough week and it's only Monday. Just opened Twitch and saw this was on and it's immediately cheered me up. Oh, I didn't bring them up, but if you guys see them in the background, it's a little bit harder with uh, this particular setup, but I do have bunnies. So if you see anything running in the background, that's what they are. Hello, bonk. Don't bonk me too much. Okay. So this is one of those moments where I don't actually really want to get that bonked. Um, it's going to be the only time in the game probably that you see me heal just for safety reasons. So I'm going to go down here and chill for a minute because I'm luring these two enemies down here. I can't remember if these are called... I think these are the Storges. I can... Yeah, uh, these are still stars, Are they still I stars? Believe. Are you sure? Yeah, they're just oh, no, the, different kinds of stars. Yeah, yeah, the Storches are the ones with the big, long snouts. Yeah, they got the long faces. Okay. Just for safety reasons. I probably didn't need to heal, but just for safety. Alrighty. So, who likes four sections in a game where you just get to chill? Not me. By the way, you probably have enough time for uh, six, seven, eight donations because we have an entire minute and a half where we just get to chill. There is nothing we can do about it. Scarlet's gonna try and climb a wall. Yeah, I might as well. We're not supposed to be able to climb this wall, but uh, collision is non-existent where collision should be. So yeah, there is a, a whole minute and a half where we can do nothing but chill. So you got any donations, now's the time. Phenomenal. While you climb that wall, I want to thank a few folks. We got $20 from Bloopa saying, sending all my love to the Frame Fatales crew, runners, commentators, and viewers, helping us raise money for a great cause and hoping to get all the Kirbys. This event is so important. Thank you so much for your never ending support towards women in speed running. Also, chat, thank you for raising $18,000. We are well on Let's our go. way to the $22,000 incentive for fear. Uh, we've got a couple more donations $10 from Anonymous, $20 from Anonymous, $15 from Anonymous. $200 from Aura. You still got time. I'm climbing. All right. We've got 25 from Anonymous, 25 from the end beta, 50 from Lauren saying thank you to everyone involved in putting this event on. I am so humbled to donate to this amazing cause. We have a $25 donation from Cupcake saying, hey, y'all. Internet Auntie Paxi here. Have you hydrated? Eaten anything? Taken your meds? Stretched? Remember, I am proud of you and love you all. All right. Thank you, Auntie. Here we are. Here's what the developers never meant for you to see. <laughs> because you're literally never it's, supposed to be able to get up here. There's the beach that you're supposed to be. beautiful. There's the beach you're supposed to be chilling around. There's the distance. There is a pit. Here is the razor thin wire that's the end of the geometry and we're done because <laughs> it is timed uh you just have to chill there for about a minute and a half there's there is nothing that you can do about it all right so i'm gonna welcome to nowhere up. yes welcome to nowhere that sort of reminds me of did you ever play bugs bunny lost in time growing up just, just I me did not. just me okay <laughs> The hub. I was too busy playing Silent Hill. Oh, that's fair. So was I actually. <laughs> but okay. it has a, uh, its hub area is called Nowhere. <laughs> All right, we're just going to run around these guys. Now look away if you have trouble with screens. Oh, this is beautiful screen. Yep, just this beautiful, beautiful screen. So we're going to be coming back through this area in just a moment. Now, I could buffer off of that item, but I'm not going to just for uh, safety reasons. But, all 
right, I ran into someone and we are clear of the shenanigans on the screen, cool. So anytime you get near that enemy that's called Calibri, that's when you have to worry about it. Alrighty. So we are just going to pick up this wedding ring and we're going to pick up this health item. And we're going to equip the thermite. So it's time to one shot a boss. You'll get to see now what you didn't get to see earlier. So I'm just gonna run up to uh, this lovely, lovely lady, stick her with a flare, and mm, boss fight's done. Goodbye, Isa. <laughs> Goodbye, Isa. This is Isa, by the we way. We barely knew thee. This is Isa, by the way. This lady in the dress, or the we, lady in the dress. Yeah. <laughs> I also forgot to change the my costume again, so I'll have to do that as soon as we the didn't see her talk over. about her, but there she is. Yeah. So Isa is looking for a friend of hers. The thing is, she is not looking so well. Because the problem is, people in this area are coming down with an quote unquote illness. Real people? You'll see what happens to real people later. And I'm just gonna. Come on. Normally, this puzzle is like, uh, if you've seen Indiana Jones, it's. Uh... You would normally have to have a weight that you would place on this pedestal. Otherwise, the door shuts behind you. And we don't have the counterweight, so we're trying to do that item glitch to All get right. past that weight. Yep. There we go. We are doing the buffer in order to grab that. Now, if I was to just grab it, those little, like, scissor-looking things behind it, they would close and you wouldn't be able to leave the room. So instead, we just did it that way. All right, so here is the, uh, how should I put it? the crown jewel of the promise run yeah that sounds about right so this is the time when we are going to grind those deaths cheated and those deaths that i was talking about earlier so we're going to pick up as many health items as we can and in this room coming up here we are going to farm nine deaths cheated so the death cheated mechanic is um, whenever you are, whenever you take damage that would put you into, um, that would kill you, but more than zero, so if you were to go to like negative 10 health, say, instead of Elster dying, oh, whoops, um, instead of Elster dying, she would get something called a Deaths Cheated. Oh, I died instead. So this is the, um, bit of a difficulty with the promise ending specifically. Now, I died. That is, in a way, a good thing because we do need, so, still need to farm six deaths. The problem is, every time you die in this game, every time you die in this game, um, uh, Elster, or not, sorry. Every time you die in this game, uh, the game's difficulty changes just like resident evil 4 this game has adaptive difficulty now for promise ending that's actually a bad thing because one difficulty of the um getting the deaths cheated is if the damage you take would end up equaling zero so not below zero but um close to or exactly on zero instead of you getting a deaths cheated don't die. Oh, I did it again. Okay. Instead of getting a deaths cheated, you get an actual death. That is bad because deaths carry over when you load the game, but deaths cheated do not, which does make things a touch harder on us. Because what we need is nine deaths cheated, then we go save, then we farm the death. But as you can see, I died twice there, which in one sense is good because I hadn't started farming the deaths cheated yet. But on the other sense, it loses us a little bit of time because it's technically done suboptimally. All right, so let's try this again. Pick up the item, please, Elster. Or just don't. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna do this a slightly different way. All right. Down. 
right, waiting a second. There we go. Okay, if that symbol pops up, we are good. So you saw that I used a health item there. I did that on purpose. Okay, we don't die, don't die, don't. Oh, darn it, it happened again. Okay, this is rather bad luck that we're getting right now, but it has happened to me before. So on the one hand, we are still getting the deaths that we need. We have three so far, but we're not getting the deaths cheated. Now, the reason why we need to farm this here rather than anywhere else is because of that barbed wire. The uh, barbed wire makes it easier for us to consistently take damage in a way that we can somewhat control. Now, the reason why I mentioned that it is harder to get this ending um, quickly on lower difficulties is because on higher difficulties, you take more damage from the barbed wire and from enemies. And because you take more damage, it is significantly less likely for you to accidentally take damage that kills you instead of giving you a death cheated. I'm going to wait for a second. Down. Down. Over. Okay. Waiting for a second. There we go. There's one. Okay, that's one. Two. Now you see me healing between each of these. That is on purpose because a, another strange part of the death's cheated mechanic is, ooh, okay, so that's three. Another part of the death's cheated mechanic is that, sorry, it's hard to focus on what I'm doing because I'm trying to hit the barb wire at a specific moment because you can sort of tell on the screen whether or not she's taken too much damage. Um, okay. One more. There we go. It's another one. Um, whenever you get a death's cheated, it's on a toggle. So if you were to then take damage again, even if it went below zero, you wouldn't get another death's cheated. Elster would get a game over. One more. All right. So we are trying to sort of game the system in order to farm deaths cheated. And every time you use a healing item, okay, that's one more. And I've run out of healing items, so we're going to have to go and save. So I've gotten five so far. We need to get nine, which is less than ideal. I thought I had more healing items than that. Hello, friend. Oh, I know which I know which healing item I forgot to pick up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go do something else first. Um, so we're going to go do. Here's the problem with limited inventory. Yeah, um, I was supposed to pick up some um, some repair packs earlier, and I forgot to pick them up. So instead, I'm going to go up here and do a little bit of a puzzle. Um, so we'll finish doing the farming in a moment. All right, there we go. Cool, we're back on track. Do, 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 do. So we have time for a few more donations while I finish farming out all of these uh, deaths cheated before I get to explaining the deaths, if you want to give me some. Phenomenal. I have a $100 donation from Luna. That says, thank you to everyone at Frame Fatales for this event. Got me I want to send it. Apologies. So thank you to everyone <laughs> at Frame Fatales for this event. And I want to spend a spe send a special shout out to my good friends at EXM. Uh, $25 from Captain Eliano. Shout out to the host for Frame Fatales, Ruby. Frozen Flygon and Foo are all fantastic. I love prize segments with Corva May. Keep up all the great work. We have three different 
$25 anonymous donations. Thank you to each of these donors. I appreciate you all. And a $25 donation from Sanjen that says, Kirby? Don't forget, <laughs> for the low, low donation rate of $25, you will qualify for all of the fantastic prizes we have lined up for you, including the plethora of Kirby's. Additionally, oh. every donation goes towards that fear incentive. So get those in before it's too late. There we go. Now we're back on track. I've got the items that I forgot. <laughs> All right. And oh, we ate another death again. It's fine. So if you're wondering about the chopsticks from the beginning of the run, that's what I'm doing. I'm counting how many deaths and deaths cheated that I got with chopsticks because I am really bad at keeping track of numbers sometimes. So I use chopsticks to keep track of them for me. At this point, I'm going to finish my death farming before I finish my deaths cheated farming. <laughs> So the reason why you would want to farm the deaths cheated first before farming the deaths is because each time you die, the game gets a little bit easier. You take a little bit less damage, but that increases the chance of accidentally dying instead of uh, getting a deaths cheated. So that's why we do the deaths cheated first normally. I'm just getting increasingly bad luck today. Okay, we did it again there. And that is five deaths and five deaths cheated. So remember, we need to get six deaths and nine deaths cheated in order to get the promise ending. Also, I have too many arms for this. There we go. All right, we've got time for maybe two other donations. Hopefully I don't die this time. <laughs> Fantastic. I've got a $25 donation from Robert that says, must have sleepy Kirby, can't resist cuteness, take money. We also have a $100 anonymous donation. Thank you so much. And just a very quick update on the costume incentives. The Ashley incentive is currently tied. So if you have a choice between default and romantic and you want to push that over the edge, now is a fantastic time to put your donation towards that. Casual is not out of the running. And of course, the Leon costume incentive is as open as well. Villain is in the lead. All right, we got time for a few more. Fantastic. We've got a $25 donation from Feria that says, thank you for everything you do, GDQ. If you read this, I would love to say thank you to my partner, James, for introducing me to your streams. We have a $10 donation from Anon Mouse. I see what you did there. <laughs> And we have a $5 donation from Anonymous in parentheses. I see what you did there too. All right, maybe two more. Fantastic. We have a $25 donation from Sneaksy that says, you got this. And chat, you know what else we got? We got a fantastic bonus run lined up for you at the end of the night, a first encounter assault recon by Fina2112. This is a unique glitchless run. So if you want to see that happen, we are just under $4,000 away from meeting that incentive. Time is running out though. So please make sure that you get your donations in if you want to see that happen and extend today's marathon. Ooh, that was a little dicey there, but I think we got it. I, th I think we've, uh, we've abused Elster enough. <laughs> Except for the fact that I still need to die one more time. So we're just going to get a hug. We're just asking that Storch, why the long face? Yep, why the long face, Mrs. Storch? Why the long face? All right, so that is nine deaths cheated and six. Six deaths. So we should be okay to get the promise ending. Of course, you know, assuming that I keep running into enemies and bonking them. Gotta always be bonking, chat. I'll always be bonking. Bonk. All right, now that that shenanigan's over with, we have met at least two of the requirements of the promise ending. So we have died enough times and we have 
quote unquote, nearly died enough times. So all we need to do is get enough damage and spend enough time healing from critical help or critical damage. All right. So, oh, no, I didn't go in there yet. So I'm going to attempt to do a glitch here again. I'm only going to try this a few times. Come on. <laughs> this door can be a pain. Eh, it's fine. We'll just do it normally. Because again, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit of a walk that we're trying to skip. But yeah, it's okay. I do need to take damage anyway, so it's fine. But yeah, if I was to have gotten that, we would have been able to skip what I just did going through the hallway there. It doesn't work on the way back, interestingly. Oh, hey, Silent Hill 2. Is that from Silent Hill 2? Yeah, oh, okay. it's pretty much exactly from Silent Hill 2. So yeah, the rings that I've been collecting in this area, the Serpent's Ring, the Wedding Ring, and the Regent's Ring. We just put those there in the correct order and we got the plate. So you may have noticed me collecting a bunch of plates during this uh, speed run in different areas. That is all for this section of the game. All of those are for opening one specific door in this area. Now we have thankfully gotten most of them, but I'm gonna heal. Because if you know this game, you know that you can very easily die in the next room and we have already we have already gotten our requisite amount of deaths in so we don't want to do that so just for safety reasons i'm going to save there because remember those barbed wires that i was running into on purpose a moment ago we have to go back through them except this time they're invisible and we're just going to casually phase through this door <laughs> Be don't worry about don't it don't worry about it it just works Okay, I'm sitting to the right here because sometimes you can get away with with taking less damage if you stay to the right there. And that is because um, I know where all of the barbed wire is quote unquote supposed to be. Um, hello, bonk. Okay. So by now I should have all six of the emblems that I need to open the next doorway. Oh, I'm in the wrong costume again, there we go. I forget sometimes since you have to do all the death farming and reset your costume every time. All right. So now we've got all of them and we are out of nowhere. Yay. And that is going to be it for the game because guess what? Guess what? It's credits. Guess the game's over. Don't worry about oh, all that of- That was a fun ride. Yeah, don't worry about all the German on the screen. Don't worry about the fact that Elster only has one arm in the cutscene. I'm sure she's fine. Game by Rose Engine. Game's over, I guess, right? Beautiful, there's, I loved it. There's the press any key, there's the title screen. Yeah, there's uh, Elster, she's looking She's looking completely healthy, don't worry about it. See, game's over. Oh wait, no it's not. Yeah, but we got a spiffy hat. Hey, the spaceship looks a lot better now. Yeah, yeah, spaceship looks fine. The Penrose just looks swell and I get to have a spiffy hat. Just ignore the fact that I only have one arm. Don't worry about By it. By the way, there is a console command for the hat as well. Um, we're just not doing it. <laughs> so right now we're just walking around. We have to actually do all the checks in the spaceship. Yeah. And it won't let proceed unless we do all this. Yeah, there's four checks on the spaceship. So this is the spaceship as it appeared in the past before everything went wrong. Stuff happened. Yeah. So this is a bit of a flashback of uh, Elster and her roommate chilling on they this were spaceship roommates. yes they were they were roommates chat nice pipes they, they were not roommates um and the game won't let us go see our uh, girly friend until we do all of the requisite checks and that was the fourth one so we get to go see her you'll get to see for her for about three seconds there she is she's super cute and she's gone oh hey we're back here now. oh hey we have one arm again so this is the point in the game when you would normally put on quote unquote the one armed costume because the game switches costumes based off of which chapter you're in now normally the game would give us the white armor costume and don't worry we're just compartmentalizing our trauma and we only have one arm again we all do it it's fine yep i know it's not fine actually but 
<laughs> okay. Oh, look, we're going to jump in another hole. Yeah, we're just doing some, uh, some uh, Silent Hill stuff here, but oh no, we're back on the beach again. So we have time for maybe two or three donations as I slowly walk Elster all the way to that boat. I love walking simulators. Beautiful. I have a $100 anonymous donation. Thank you so much. We also have a brand new incentive that I would love to tell y'all about. For our upcoming run of Resident Evil 4 Remake, we have an unlock we have an unlock here to pet the dog. This is a $2000 goal. We are currently $150 towards it, so we're already well on our way. And then on top of that, once we meet that goal, every 250 after that gets a bonus pet of the dog. We're going to kick this off with a $25 donation from Zokubun, saying one of the best parts of Frame Fatale's events are pets. Here at the pet the here's to the pet the dog incentive and all the gaming pets out there. Similarly, $25 from Gumdrop. All right, uh so for those who don't know my rabbits are uh, Garrus, Tally, and the chinchillas are Edward and Alphonse. If you know what those are referencing, you know and you can get a chuckle. So we are back in Serpinski, which is the area we were at at the very beginning of the game after we uh, donned the spacesuit for a bit. It's seen better days. It's, uh, it's gone a bit fleshy, but I'm sure it's fine. I saw somebody mention Silent Hill 4 in chat. Don't <laughs> worry, we're going to get to Silent Hill 4 later. Oh, I know what part you're thinking of. I know what part you're thinking of. Hello! And bonks everywhere. All right, so um, we are going into the final area of the game, Rotfront. And we have to change costumes again. Boom. Okay. So we've got all of our frenzies here, and of course the game healed us back to full again. Very rude of it. So we have to spend some time getting ourselves back up to our proper health. Which is more bonking. Which is almost, you know, almost gamed over, but not that gamed over. All right. So I picked up the flashlight from my box. Normally, I would go through this entire room, um, spending as much time as possible with the flashlight off in order to sneak past it. But turns out, if you have the flashlight on, you aggro the enemies much easier. And we kind of want to do that because we want them to give us some bonks. Because we just got to make sure. We just got to make sure we take enough bonks, chat. Always be bonking. Those are some good bonks. Yeah, always be bonking. Though, I suppose if somebody really, really wanted to, they could uh, take the time to time out during their run, like have a little timer set for um, all of the time that they spend healing. But that would be way too, way too difficult. <laughs> and annoying, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> Instead, we're just going to bonk all of the enemies. All right, so Elster's entire deal, we have this entire time, we've been talking about glitches, we've been talking about bugs, we haven't talked about Elster. Elster's entire deal is she's trying to look for somebody named Ariane, who was the girl with the white hair, who was totally just her roommate. It's fine. Um. She is theoretically somewhere around here, maybe, or she's a Cthulian abomination. We may never know. You know, get you a girl who can do both. Okay, we are just setting the frequency for um, our radio. Hopefully I don't get the bug where we get to listen to this for the next few minutes. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. We did it. Okay, cool. So, that incredibly annoying tone that you heard um, a moment ago before I set the frequency, sometimes the game won't actually switch to the song that it's supposed to, and it'll just do that. Eh. That skip isn't as important to get, it only saves you a couple seconds. But the thing about the um, buffers is 
for most of them, not all of them, but for most of them, they only save you a few seconds. So if you spend too long trying to get the buffer, you end up losing time overall. All right, so just like each one of uh, most of the other chapters before this, this is a collecting chapter. We need to get six of something. So in this game, it's a lot of either getting five or six of something in order to get to the next chapter. In this one, it's get six tarot cards. We're not actually going to do the puzzle that the tarot cards are. Um, don't, don't worry about Ariane there. I'm sure she's fine. Um, we're not actually going to do the puzzle, but we just need to get the cards. Yeah, because the tarot card puzzle, that all that actually gives you is a solution for another puzzle. Yep. But thankfully, we, we know that solution. Oh, already. I forgot to mention that this uh, is one of the... Yeah, yeah, this is the bad hallway. I apologize. I forgot to mention it. But we're going to be coming back through that hallway again in just a moment here. And also coming up, um, as soon as we go up the stairs here, we're going to be hitting one of those screens again. So if you have some um, difficulties with light, I would look right now. Right, so you're good to look back at the screen now. And we're gonna be coming back through this area and I will try to remember to mention it again instead of when we get to the door. Um, all right, there's another tarot card. So the reason why I did all of that stuff, the antenna and setting music again onto, well, it's not technically music, but setting a tone to our radio is in order to open another little, like, little lockbox thing in this other room here. We're gonna turn the radio back on. There we go. And that's all we needed it for because for some reason that tone on the radio opens that box. All right, we're gonna be going back into the rooms of the wibble wobble screen death eye vision. So if you have a problem, if you have um, issues with that, I would look away again. If you're playing casually and just like reading all the item descriptions, it does explain about the box and the tone. Yes. So I recommend you play the game and you get to find out why the box is okay, I would look away again. <laughs> all right. These Let enemies me... are terrible. Oh, they are Playing awful. Playing casually, I hated these enemies. Yeah, that enemy is called the Calibri. You can kill them with the radio. And by the way, look way again. And we are done with them for the rest of the game. Okay, no more wibble wobble camera vision. Not in count, not including a little bit at during the fog fight, depending on um, how far you go. All right. So here is. Theoretically, the second to last tarot card. We should only have one more tarot card to get. And just for a good measure, please hit me. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have to collect all the cards. Otherwise, a specific item won't spawn for us to pick up to solve the last puzzle. Yes. So, so this puzzle up here, the one in the north part of that room, that is the puzzle we're trying to get um, a specific item that lets us start the puzzle. Problem is, it doesn't spawn until you get um, all of the... I did that wrong. All of the tarot cards. So you remember Isa from earlier, the girl in the blue dress who's just looking for her friend? Yeah, now you get to see what happens when humans who are not replicas come to this area. She turned into chocolate pudding. And there's the last card. Yay. It's okay. It was a happy ending, right? Yep. I mean, who wouldn't want to turn into chocolate pudding? All right, now when we go through this door, you'll notice that the room has changed a bit. Uh, now we're going to get to Silent Hill 4 time. Yep. Okay. Two, three, one, 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 two, one, two, and one, two. Oh, oh, oh. Now, just for... Oh, oh no, I, ha I have to actually go for it. Never mind. I was going to say just for safety reasons, I was going to put a save before this, but I forgot that... Uh, Oh, don't touch that book. Don't touch that it's book. It's fine. No, we don't want to touch. Oh, no. Always read the king in yellow. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. So we're going to pick up the guns that I've been collecting throughout the game. We're going to pop a save just in case. And it is time for us to actually do some combat in a survival horror game. 
Seems All legit. Right, this is the final boss of the game. There's going to be a whole lot of uh, chaos on the screen. Yep. Get ready for uh, get ready for some bullet hell, just like uh, those uh, shooters. What are those, what are those shooters with the with the side scrolling and the ships? Usually, I can't remember what those are called, but time stamp for some of that. All right. So this is Falk. Falk is going to throw a bunch of spears at us. Whenever Falk throws the spears, we're going to pick up the spears and we're going to try and hit Falk with the spears. I don't know why Falk decides that she's going to, uh, oh, I was too far, that she's going to throw the instruments of her own demise at us, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. That's, yeah, that is health items. Okay, cool. So what There's we're probably some sort of symbolism about self-defeat in here. Don't worry about it. Yeah. What we're trying to do is we are just trying to get all six of the, her spears um, into her back. So if we can manage to do that, then it's fine. All right. I'm going to heal real quick. Reload my gun. Hope I get to the spear in time. Cool. Now she will pick up the spears if they've been down for too long. So we need to be careful of that. All right, I cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So now I think we have to wait a bit because she still has one spear that I need her to throw back at me before I can pick it up. So we're just gonna chill and do some uh, ring around the rosy around these lovely, I uh, can't remember what this enemy is called, but around these lovely enemies here. Yeah, I don't remember which enemy those are either. I remember the ones who hide in vents and pop out at you. That's all I remember. Okay. Falk is being rather rude right now. Honey buns, please come over here and throw your spear at me. Okay, just checking that I didn't have one in my inventory that I forgot about. So when she picks up the spears, you just have to wait for her to throw them. Sometimes you can do damage and it helps, but because she's all the way in the corner over here, it's a little bit difficult to hit her without the screen going all wibble wobble on us. And it's so dark we can't see the shields that are rotating around her either. Yep. Thankfully, I can still see the um, targeting reticle. So there's that. Come on, Falk. Falk is being is extra strange. rude. Yeah, usually she doesn't hang out on the side like that. Is there a spear somewhere around here? No, there's not. She definitely has the spear. Oh, and you can also see that Elster is somehow shouldering um, the gun. Oh, nope, that's the sound we were looking for. Cool, spear. Um, Elster is somehow holding the gun in a hand that she doesn't have, which is my favorite part about the one-armed costume. Is she just going to chill over there? Okay, apparently she is. And that's Falk. All right, time is going to be coming up as soon as I hit the final door. Now, fingers crossed that I counted correctly and that we took enough damage. Because there have been a couple times where it hasn't triggered properly. Yeah, we're almost there. Everyone, just hold on to your butts, crush your fingers. And... Time. Come on, yeah! <laughs> if you see red, if you see red, we got promise. Okay, cool. I triggered it properly. It, it always causes me a little bit of anxiety when I get to the end of um, promise ending because you can't track whether or not you've done everything you need to do properly. So I tend to overcompensate. But there you go. That is promise ending. I believe they did a um, memory ending. And this is Ariane, by the way. Um, they did memory ending for uh, AGDQ, I believe. So this is one of the other two endings. There is four endings of the game. Three of them are speed runnable. Um, one of them, the leave ending, is technically not really speed runnable because of some of its requirements. I do have a theoretical run that I've been talking to some of the mods about maybe doing. The sad part of it is that it does require us having to use a console command in order to force the ending. But there we go. We're just going to skip this. Don't worry. She's just giving her girlfriend a hug. 
and there is our stat screen. Oh, I got under, I got under a minute in game. I went over on uh, game time, but at least I was under on active time. Awesome. Yeah. We got in a lot of trouble with uh, trying to farm those deaths cheated. They were just being very rude to me today. Okay. So that is Signalis. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. I don't know if my bunnies are around there. You can see them? Nope, they are hiding, but they are super cute. If you come follow me at Miss Scarlet Tanager, uh, twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager, my rabbits have their own dedicated webcam. So if you like bunnies, come check them out. They are super adorable. Um, and you want to shout yourself out? Yeah, I'm Soul Mass. You can follow me also on Twitch at the uh, name you see on the screen, Soul Mass 218. And I also speedrun games. I don't speedrun this one, but I did play it casually on stream. So if you like casual runs and speedruns, give me a follow. Yes, that Arion and Elster were just roommates. Totally, totally just roommates. Not cano just roommates. not canonically otherwise. Um, so that is going to be it for Signalis. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I look forward to some Resident Evil. <laughs>